The, the basics of label reading are actually pretty simple. You're looking primarily for eight words, and those words are wheat, rye, barley, malt, brewer's yeast, yeast extract, and autolyzed yeast extract, as well as oats. You know, oats are naturally gluten-free, but in this country they're so often contaminated by wheat, rye, and barley okay. that people with celiac disease have to specially look for labeled gluten-free oats. But those are the basics, those eight words. Fortunately, there's a labeling law that passes in August 2014 that says if a company wants to label a product gluten-free, they have to be able to guarantee that it's under 20 parts per million to actually be gluten-free. And 20 parts per million simply is a term um, that defines the amount of gluten that's considered gluten-free and therefore safe for people to eat. So when you're shopping for gluten-free foods, and when especially when you're just starting out, it's very, um, it's very helpful to look first for products that say gluten-free on them, because that's one step in the right direction. To memorize those words so that you can double check ingredient labels. And often to also shop the perimeter of the grocery store because that's where a lot of the unprocessed food is to begin with. We know how many things are actually safe on the gluten-free diet to eat. Mm -hmm. So it's just the processed foods and primary that we need to look at. I do get confused looking at the labels sometimes, so this will be great to get a chance to Many people get confused because there's so many ingredients that you actually don't have to worry about mm -hmm. that they think that they do. And a primary one is natural flavors. Mm -hmm. Natural flavors show up everywhere in dressings and energy bars, and you name it, protein powder drinks, all over the place. But if you do not see the words wheat, rye, barley, or malt on a package that has natural flavorings in it mm -hmm. and the rest of it appears to be fine, that product is likely gluten free. Okay, so that's great to know. Yeah. That takes a big yeah. Uh, yeah. that takes a big load off. Yeah. Similar words would be citric acid. People are always asking me about citric acid, glucose syrup, or distilled alcohol. Mm -hmm. I think we should just take a minute to to talk about oats. So this is an example of a company that has organic whole grain steel cut oats but nowhere do you see gluten-free. Mm -hmm. So these oats would be contaminated and not fit for someone with celiac disease. Okay. This is something that's really important. Mm -hmm. And in fact, oats are treated specially in celiac centers and usually are not um, eaten for the first few months until the patient has had a chance to talk to their doctor about whether it's appropriate for them. Mm. What about when you see like maltodextrin? You mentioned that was one of them, right? Yes, um, maltodextrin is very unique. If maltodextrin, which is a starch, comes from wheat, they will have to write wheat maltodextrin. Wheat must be labeled because it's a major allergen. So you would see that. Now, does that start in 2014 or is that even now? Where they that's have to been, write? that's now, that that's started now. years ago. Yes. Okay, oh good. The new law as of 2014, August, is that a, a manufacturer who labels their product gluten-free must be able to guarantee that it's under 20 parts per million. Okay. What's interesting about that and what's really important for people to know is that uh, although the vast majority of manufacturers out there are labeling properly, there are certainly mistakes can be made. Mm -hmm. So there's a program called Gluten-Free Watchdog glutenfreewatchdog.org tests for gluten contamination because not all foods labeled gluten-free meet the FDA guidelines. Medications do not have to follow the gluten-free labeling law. So they can have wheat in them, wheat starch, and not actually be identified on the label. So the best thing for you to do is call the manufacturer directly, ask for product research, tell them that you have celiac disease or your child has celiac disease, the name of the medication, and, and request that information. Supplements actually do follow the food labeling law, so they have to say if they contain wheat, and if they decide to voluntarily label themselves gluten-free, then they have to follow the under 20 parts per million law. So that's okay. a nice 
that's nice and useful to see. You'll see many supplements, vitamin and mineral supplements, things like that, that have gluten-free right on them. Would you ever suggest like just Googling to see if the medication has gluten in it? Like, you know, sometimes you're on hold at these places for a while and it just takes a while to get through. What do you think about like the validity or the reliability of, of doing that? Yeah, it's a really good question. And I think that instead of Googling something, instead of relying on rumors or potential misinformation, it's best to look at reliable sites. There's a site called glutenfreedrugs.com, which is run by a celiac pharmacist, and it's wow. an exceptional resource. The best yeah. answer is always to call the company directly and speak to product research. Okay. So that's a really good question. Thanks. You should also find a lot of information on celiacnow.org, which is our website from Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center. Comprehensive information on nutrition and medicine and many of the things that we've talked about today. So let's talk about keeping your child safe outside of the home.